I want to talk now about the active and passive voice. Voice is an attribute of every verb. So every verb in English is either in the active voice or the passive voice. And I want to explain what that means. It would help if you knew what a transitive verb and a direct object uh, is, uh, but it's probably not essential for this lesson. Now, uh, let's take a simple sentence like, I will slap the board. Now, in asking what voice is it in, is it in the active voice or the passive voice, we need to know two things. We need to know, first, what the subject of the verb is. And I will slap, will slap is the verb, and the subject is I. So the subject's I. The other thing we need to know is the agent. And that's a new idea I haven't talked about before. The agent is the entity, the person or thing, that is doing whatever action is named by the main verb. And the main verb, so the whole verb here is will slap. The main verb is always the last word in the verb, slap. So who is doing this slapping? And the answer is I. I am doing the slapping. I will slap the board, so I'm doing the slapping. So I is the subject and the agent. And that means that this is in the active voice. The active voice is said to occur when the subject and the agent are the same. Now, when can it, other, can it be otherwise? How can the subject not be the agent? Well, I will slap the board can be rewritten uh, in this way. The board will be slapped. The board will be slapped. It looks kind of light, but that's what it says. The board will be slapped. Now, what do we have here? The verb is now three words long. Will be slapped. Uh, what is the subject? Well, the board. The board is now the subject. Uh, the board will be slapped. So the board is the subject. And what is doing this slapping? Well, not the board. The board isn't slapping. The board is being slapped. So the agent in this re reworking of this sentence, the agent is actually unnamed. We don't know who the agent is. So this is in the passive voice. So the passive voice is what you've got when the subject and the agent are not identical. When they are not the same, then something is said to be in the passive voice. Uh, now, so even if I had written the board will be slapped by me, uh, and thus include the agent, I, uh, you still would not have a situation where the subject and the agent were the same. So, to sum up, uh, when the subject is the agent, it's in the active voice, the verb is in the active voice. When the subject is not the agent, the verb is in the passive voice. Now, as you can see, what happens just in this move from active to passive uh, is here, the board, which is the object, it answers the question, what is slapped, the board, becomes the subject. So what is the object in the active voice becomes the subject in the passive voice. There are a few other things you can say about the passive voice. The passive voice of a verb will always be one word longer than the active voice. Uh, will slap in the active becomes will be slapped, three words as opposed to two. Uh, and that extra word is always going to be a form of the verb to be. It won't always be be, as it is here but it will always be some form of the word to be. And the last word, the main verb, of every passive voice verb is the past participle. It's always going to be a past participle. Now, uh, all verbs can be expressed in the active voice, but not all verbs can be expressed in the passive voice. So, for example, if we look at this sentence, uh, the price fell quickly. Well, okay, is this in the active or the passive? Fell is the verb, well, actually, we already know, because 
the passive voice can never, the verb in the passive voice can never be just one word long. It always must be at least two. And one of those two would have to be a form of to be. But uh, fell. So what fell? The price. So the price is the subject. And what did this falling? What did the falling? Again, the price. So we have here the active voice, because the agent and the subject are the same. But if we tried to uh, re rewrite this in the passive, we get into trouble. Because if we say, well, here we say, what is slapped, the board? And here, if we ask the question, what is fallen? Well, the price fell, but it, it doesn't make grammatical sense to say the price is fallen. You, you could say the price has fallen, but not the price is fallen. So this just doesn't make any sense. And it's even more obvious if the sentence is something like, I am happy. Uh, well, now, if you were to try to ask the question, OK, uh, what, what is slapped? The question here would be, what is been? Which is absolutely not an English kind of question. That just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, one other thing on this introductory first pass uh, at the passive voice and active voice. Um, one thing that's interesting is that sentences that sound perfectly natural uh, in the active voice can sound really odd in the passive voice. Uh, and this can be a source of humor at, say, parties or, or on a date if things are getting kind of slow. Uh, here I've written, uh, pro probably very lightly here, I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. Now, what voice is that in? Uh, well, the, the verb is three words long, will be seeing. And who is doing this seeing? I. Uh, so I is the subject. And, and the agent, excuse me, I is the agent, I is doing the scene, and I is also the subject. So here we have an active voice. What is seen? You. So we could make you the subject of a passive voice construction. And instead of will be seen, three words, we need something that's four words long. And it would be you'll be being seen by me. So if I'll be seeing you is the active voice, you'll be being seen by me is the exact equivalent in the passive voice, except it sounds really odd and, in fact, a little creepy. So uh, if you want to freak somebody out, uh, you can say to them, instead of I'll be seeing you, just say, you'll be being seen by me.